Alrighty, I hereby call the City Council meeting for September 13th to order. If everybody would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Councilmember Mercado, would you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All righty. Linda, roll call. Councilmember Andresic. Here. Councilmember Mercado. Here. Vice Mayor King. And Mayor Sierra. Here. Thank you. Uh, do we have any reordering of the agenda tonight? No, ma'am. All righty. We move on to, uh, oh, before we get to public comments, would you like to uh, make a comment about an RV notice that went out? Mm. That is correct. Uh, notices went out for the new ordinance that was revised uh, earlier this year. And the ordinance allows you to park in your driveway permanently with certain setbacks. There is a provision in there about 72 hour parking for unloading and loading of your RVs. But that is for people who may not store on their property or can't store it on the property. They're still allowed to bring it to their house to unload and load for a 72 hour period. But permanent storage on the driveway is allowed per the ordinance. Alrighty. Thank you very much. I, I had a lot of phone calls and emails and people with questions. So I was hoping to clarify that. Um, moving on to public comment. This is your opportunity. We've got a few of them tonight to get up and talk about any item that you want to talk about, whether it's on the agenda or not. You've got your three minutes. We have quite a few tonight. So we will start with Caroline Abad Abade. Um, abate. Abate. I'm sorry. Oh, no Please, problem. That's welcome fine. back. Thank you. Members of the Buellton City Council, thank you for allowing me to speak with you. I support President Trump because of his appointment of Judge Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court and because of his current nominee, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. The job of a Supreme Court Justice is to determine if a law is constitutional. To measure the constitutionality of a law, Supreme Court justices must take into account the original goals and intentions of the authors of our Constitution. Otherwise, they are denying the wisdom of our Founding Fathers, pretending to know better than those who courageously signed our Declaration of Independence, bravely fought for our independence in the Revolutionary War, and built a Constitution in 1787 that was wiser than they could have ever realized. As well, any constitutional test of modern law must reflect the fact that the hearts and minds of the authors and signers of our Constitution were guided by the Judeo-Christian tradition, the rightful heritage of our country. When judges ignore the intentions of those who wrote and signed the Constitution, and they disregard our religious heritage, they are using the court to remake our country into something it was never meant to be. The following is part of an email from President Trump regarding his choice of Judge Brett Kavanaugh for the United States Supreme Court. Judge Kavanaugh has impeccable credentials, great intellect, unbiased judgment, and a deep reverence for the Constitution of the United States. The faithful application of the Constitution is the bedrock of our freedom, the cornerstone of our society, and the foundation of our government. Judge Kavanaugh will uphold his duties to the American people and will faithfully interpret the Constitution as written. As President, I am committed to protecting our citizens through the rule of law and look forward to working with Congress to confirm Judge Kavanaugh as the next Supreme Court Justice. Please support President Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you and may each person listening have a good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alrighty. Next on the list, Don Wafer. Hello. 
I'm Don Wafer. I live at 243 Glen Norway and I've been there for about 22 years. Um, I'm here um, in regards to recreational vehicle um, code. I'm a little confused about it because it's talking about you can park on the short side of the house, but it doesn't make sense to me because the long side of the house actually allows the trailers to sit further back off of the property if somebody was to put in a proper um, pad that is of the concrete or pavers that you guys are requesting. Um, I have a trailer that is sitting on the long side and it's not visible by anybody coming down the road because it's on the long side. If I move it to the short side, it's going to be visible to everybody. And I'm about one and a half feet shy of um, that two and a half foot thing. Also, there in some of the homes along Glenora, we have really steep driveways, so it wouldn't be safe to put it there. And because of the incline, I can't put it in the driveway, and I can't put it on the short side of the house. Now, my other option is put it behind the gate. Yes, it's five feet away from my house, but because of the way the awning comes down, it will make it be very close to the neighbor's yard. And because I have a neighbor that complains about everything, um, I would then have to take off the awning of my house, or the overhang, in order to move the trailer over to make it fit. So I'm trying to be compliant with this. The problem is, is it seems like there's a lot of houses like this, and then there's a lot of houses that don't have a short side that are completely flat. Where, which side do you park on? Um, I would be happy to put a pad on my lawn and take out half of my lawn because there we're saving water. I looked at this as an opportunity to take the lawn out and put the trailer there, but it's not up to code. Um, I took pictures of where it's sitting right now from the street and how you cannot see it because we have a very large hedge. Can I bring this up there? But if we were to also park it, if we were to park it on the short side, if we went out and, you know, got a shorter trailer so we could make it fit, um, then we have this big, huge overhang of a neighbor's palm tree that I spent $8,000 putting in a new... Uh, $8,000 putting in a new driveway and tried to make the driveway less inclined, but the neighbor's palm tree hangs over into our yard and I can't trim it. And I've already had the top of my roof on my car dented because of fronds falling, but that is not in your jurisdiction. So I can't do much about any of that. And it, it frustrates me that this short side is the only side that we can put the trailer on. If we could put it on the long side, I'd be good. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Randy Haggard. Good evening, and thank you for letting me speak to the council tonight. Um, some of you may remember I was here last spring to talk about some of the uh, financial challenges the school district faces. Uh, my name is Randy Haggard. I'm the superintendent for Bealton Union School District. And as we were talking about that, the same evening there was a speech given by a young woman from the high school um, who was bemoaning the loss of the music program at Haunted many years ago during the recession. And so one of the things that the Bealton Union School District Board has done is placed a measure on the ballot for a parcel tax, a very popular name, uh, for one of the few ways that a school district can raise additional revenue. And so I'd just like to share with you a couple of facts about Measure A, which is on the ballot in November. Uh, first off, it would levy a nine, $99 per year tax on each parcel in Buellton uh, Union School District, which comes to about 28 cents a day. And that would uh, last for a period of eight years and then sunset. Uh, it would provide approximately $240,000 a year for programs that are very specifically outlined in the measure. Uh, restoring the music program, providing lower class sizes for our students, support for science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics, and enhance student support um, for interventions and for, uh, for psychological support as well. There would be exemptions for any uh, senior over the age of 65 and for anyone on disability. Uh, 
Uh, that's a, a very important part of this measure. There's also built-in accountability. Uh, there would be a citizens bond oversight committee that would review and have an audit each year for how those resources were used to provide support for those programs. And I think one of the interesting aspects of measures such as this, which are becoming much more popular around the state of California due to inadequate school funding, is that it is local control over the funding that the community itself would generate. And as a result of that, the state and the federal government can't take dollars away from our schools in this respect. And so thank you for letting me share with you about Measure A. Have thank a good evening. Thank you very much. <coughs> thank you. Okay, I've got three more speaker slips for public comment. If anybody else wants to throw their slip in, now's the time to fill it out. Our next speaker is Kathy Vreeland. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council, and lots of members of the community, which is nice to see. <coughs> um, I just wanted to share with you the uh, anniversary coming up for the Avenue of Flags. I know I've said it before, but we have some posters here tonight or flyers if they'd like to, anybody would like to take. I'll leave them over here. Um, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of when uh, then Governor Reagan dedicated the avenue to the city of Bealton because they had moved Highway 101 to where it is currently. So uh, we're celebrating 50 years. We're going to be having Ronald Reagan, President Reagan's son, Michael Reagan, come be our keynote speaker. Um, we've got some music and some speakers. Um, that day we have color ballad. We have some cookies and lemonade provided. So it's just a nice community event to come out and celebrate the avenue. It's going to be colorful. Um, so we just like to invite the community to come out and join us that day. It's from 10.30 to 11.30 on the Avenue. And then also following um, this whole program, if people so wish, up at Flying Flags RV Resort, it's the Vintage Trailer Bash, uh, which is kind of a blast from the past. Everything kind of shrinks that weekend at the campground, so it's really fun to walk through. Um, and that has an, they have an open house on Saturday as well. Um, so I encourage people to go and meander through. Uh, through the campground to visit the owners and learn about the restoration of some of our little campers. And that's, uh, I think they're having about 230 people this year, which is their largest turnout yet. So anyhow, those are a couple things I um, just wanted to share with you, and I'll leave these here if people want to grab. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, our last public speaker, Larry Bishop. Step on up. <coughs> Thank you, Council, for hearing me tonight. It's so nice to see so many uh, volunteers here. Uh, it, uh, it's really uh, it's wonderful that uh, all the work they've done, and it, it is just uh, I didn't realize there was that many. <laughs> uh, so that's that's great. I'm I'm here to talk about the Green Team, and I want to thank the City Council um, and uh, City Manager Mark Rosinski and and staff uh, for reconstituting the, uh, uh, the the green the green team which does very important work for our uh, for our city and there are many crucial issues uh, from a sustainability and environmental standpoint that uh, that they are addressing and it was a, a, a a, a large, large meeting, and, and a lot of uh, a devoted people participated uh, this last week. I went to um, uh, my main concern, uh, and and for having the green team uh, 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 reconstituted, was uh, uh, the program of community choice energy, which was presented a month or two ago to the city council from the county, and. This is a, a program that allows each community, whether it be a county, a, a group of counties or cities, to, uh, uh, to own uh, or to take control of the energy that uh, is, is uh, uh, consumed within the, the city, uh, within the, uh, that jurisdiction. And, and uh, so they, they buy the energy, they form a jurisdiction that buys the energy and then sells it, uh, sells it to its consumers and buys energy from its consumers at a much higher rate uh, than uh, PG&E does. So it is, it is many benefits to community choice energy. I, I did want to show you a map uh, that I've sent around that shows all the communities, especially in green, that have operating community choice uh, um, 
uh, uh, groups in California, and it's basically the whole coast of, of California and a lot of in, in, inward areas. We're shown, and San Luis Obispo County, and we are shown as having uh, as as just studying this, I um, I think the uh, the team for for bringing that up, and I look forward to bringing information to the team and to the and to the city, so that the city can make an informed decision uh, to join community uh, or Central Coast Energy, which is the group Santa Barbara City, Carpentry City, Goleta City. Uh, uh, and and the and the Santa Barbara County, in 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 procuring and, and uh, our energy and working with PG&E to uh, to properly dis distribute it. We can do it cheaper. It saves consumers money. It's say it's 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 we buy greener energy, and we uh, will um, uh, it will and in fact is cheaper. The only thing that these jurisdictions ask. They don't require staff to do anything except provide one city council person to be on the, the jurisdiction that buys this energy. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you very much, Larry. I did have another speaker, and I apologize. Jerry Dominguez, please step up. I have it for not for public comment. Did you turn one in for public comment? I have one for trucks on McMurray. Well, yeah. That's. That, that's it's, it's regarding that. Okay, yeah. not that's not item number nine later. I'll be calling when we get to that one. Okay. Absolutely, I will not forget you, Ms. Dominguez. Hello, everybody. Uh, what a crowd. I get to talk about special needs to a lot of people. Um, I'm here tonight to ask you to think about increasing the built and recreation department staff. Perhaps a half-time position to be shared by Solvang. They've been both built and recreation and Solvang rec. The cities have been so supportive of our Special Olympics programs. Thank you to Solvang and Bealton. Um, what we would like to see is this position um, would continue to work with adapted recreation programs, uh, the Special Olympics, the schools, and the community. What I suggest is a short term simple, and a word I'd like to stay away from is study, but that's what we're going to need. To exchange information, identify possibilities and interests. This group would include the participants. Often people with disabilities may be overlooked without being meant to, that meaning to happen. It's sort of, what can we give you? They want to be part of the action. And that's what we propose. It would include the participants, both the and Solving Recreation Departments, the parents, the schools, and the community. We have a couple of really good programs going on already, and some more. I met with Mayor Holly this week and discussed some uh, possibilities that uh, we're, she's interested in, as well as the people I uh, see and share time with. Anyway, I want you to think about it. I know when you someone comes asking for money, um, it takes some thought. But uh, I think it would really enhance Bilton, especially the recreation department. This is our latest recreation department uh, schedule. Look at it. See what you might be able to add by Christmas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. All righty. I don't have any other speaker slips for public comment, so I am closing public comment. Before I move on to the consent calendar, I would just like to let people know our city attorney, Steve McEwen, is attending by phone tonight. So if any legal questions come up, we, uh, we have an attorney in the building, kind of. Um, on the line. On the line. Uh, moving on to the consent calendar, we have a few items today. We've got the minutes of August 9, 2018, 
regular city council meeting, list of claims to be approved and ratif ratified for payment to date for fiscal year 2018-19, the quarterly report for April 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2018 from Visit San Ynez Valley, the Visit SYV, Resolution number 18-17, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Buellton, California, declaring a shelter crisis pursuant to SB 850, Chapter 48, Statutes of 2018, and Government Code Section 8698.2. Resolution number 18-18, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Buellton, California, adopting the 2018 City of Buellton Emergency Management Plan, the EMP, and the monthly treasurer's report through July 31st, 2018. I had a question on the quarterly report for Visit SYV. I don't see Shelby here, though, or anybody. Yes, he did not attend. Okay. So. Would you, I'm prepared to propose approval items one through six, but would you want to pull three to, to we? I just, I, I guess I could just call him and ask questions. If you want to email me the question, I can follow up or Terrific. you can call him directly. I just wanted to know how he spent the funds from Buellton. Okay. If you want to email that to me, then I can respond back to the entire council. Perfect. And answer. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Do my I have motion, a motion then? My motion stands one through six, please. I'll second. Linda? Councilmember Andresic. Aye. Councilmember Mercado. Aye. And Mayor Sierra. Aye. Thank you. All righty, now comes the part that I like one of the best parts about being a mayor. Uh, tonight I get to give a proclamation to an uh, amazing volunteer group in our city, uh, the Buellton uh, Singer Thrift Shop. They have been in business for over 35 years in our town and uh, do an amazing job. We have an incredible senior center here and if it were not for our thrift shop, we probably wouldn't have a senior center. So I am going to give this proclamation. I do see two uh, volunteer managers. We have Rosemary Rehor and Diane Day here. Uh, Shirley Emberg Anderson was the first volunteer manager, and uh, she was not able to make it. So I'd like to come down and do the proclamation. If you have any of your volunteers who would like to be a part of this, please. Feel free. Yay. <laughs> I love you here. My acclamation. <laughs> you know, it's almost better if I just turn this way, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're this way. Okay, let's do it this way. You guys are all amazing. Okay, there's a lot of wherefores and, and whereases. Um, this is a proclamation honoring the volunteers of the Buellton Senior Thrift Shop. Whereas the Buellton Singer Thrift Shop exists to serve nonprofit charitable organizations such as the Buellton <laughs> Singer Center, and their passionate work was founded to promote hello <laughs> uh, the general wel welfare of seniors in Buellton. And whereas volunteers of the Buellton Senior Thrift Shop continually raise money for Meals on Wheels to provide meals for Buellton seniors. And whereas volunteers are always looking for ways to help people in need, whether it's taking clothing and household items to those who've lost everything in local fires and floods, or by providing blankets and towels to the Santa Ynez Valley Humane Society, and whereas volunteers continually offer supplies to the Buellton Rec Center, local churches, veterans, the Women's Crisis Shelter, Theater Fest, the Buellton Union School District, the Buellton Chamber of Commerce, and many others, and whereas volunteers work to improve the quality of life, total health, and well-being of Buellton senior citizens every day, and whereas the community is extremely fortunate to have such valuable volunteers at the Buellton Singer Thrift Shop to assist our community's seniors and victims of local disasters, now, therefore, I, Holly Sierra, Mayor of the City of Buellton, on behalf of the Buellton City Council, uh, hereby honor volunteers of the Buellton Senior Thrift Shop for their tireless service to our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
It's about time. <laughs> Sorry. Look at those paparazzi. Yeah, I know. Isn't this like a movie yeah, star? Yeah. <laughs> Get my bed signed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I turn the floor over to you for a couple minutes. If there's anything you would like to say, I'd really like to thank. I mean, I'm, I'm recognizing volunteer managers, but the volunteers who come, show up every day, six days a week, are are the true heroes of our community, and I thank you all very much. Go ahead, Drew. This is our leader. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Do you want to talk? Yeah, for a second. Just for a second. Um, Wow, this is really exciting because I've been doing this for 17 years and I keep saying I'm going to retire and I still haven't. <laughs> but we, we do do a lot for people and besides just having a thrift store and work. Um, it, it's an honor. I mean, this is, I don't know what to say. Just thank you, everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to use the microphone. I'm going to use the microphone because you know I love microphones. Um, <laughs> I just want to say thank you, first of all, to council members and everyone in the city that just make our jobs really easy and a great place to live here and be a part of Buellton. And mostly I just want to thank each and every one of these volunteers who, without you every day, the seniors in this community, their lives aren't as good as they are because of each and every one of the sacrifices that you guys make and get up and volunteer your time and you could choose anywhere to go and spend your time and give your love and I'm just so grateful that you choose us. Thank you. Well, you're all welcome to stay for the rest of the council meeting if you'd like. Or Thank you, everyone. Somebody shout me up. Thank you. We didn't. We lost some of the room, but we still have a good-sized group here. Uh, we're moving on. Uh, public hearings. No, ma'am. Okay. Council member comments, items. Council member Mercado. Oh, crab feast. The crab feast was well done. Pam and Nico did a great job in the built-in PTA, and it was something that we hadn't done before, but would we'll definitely do it again. And it was great time had by all. I totally agree with you. A lot of work went into it. Yep, I was working. <laughs> <laughs> I know you you work a lot. Uh, any public comments, items for you? Not okay. Not right I just, and yeah. I, I think we've uh, we've got a full ballot for uh, for the election. So I encourage everyone to, if you're not registered to vote, get registered by October 22nd. That's the last day you can you can register to vote and do vote. Absolutely. Um, I just had a couple. The, the 50th anniversary on the 22nd, um, Kathy took care of. Uh, Jerry Dominguez mentioned Special Olympics. Right now, Special Olympics, they're working on their soccer season. It's every Saturday at Dunn School soccer fields 
from 9 to 11. Uh, it's amazing. Dunn School uh, is letting the Special Olympics use the fields. Their head women's coach is coaching the team. Their students are volunteering. It's, uh, it's something really special. Everybody should get out there at least one Saturday and cheer these kids on. It, it was, uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. The other one is before our next council meeting on September 25th, the Senior Center is hosting their monthly dinner. I believe it starts about 5 o'clock. They have invited all the candidates to come and answer questions. And if the public would like to uh, ask any questions, this is your first real big opportunity because all the candidates running uh, will be invited and will probably be there. So that's it. OK. Written communications? No, ma'am. Committee reports. Larry did a great job on the Green Committee. Holly and I were there, so I'll, I'll let him take credit for that one. Um, Ed and I met today with Mark on our ad hoc committee on the attorneys, so that will be coming back to the council here in the next couple weeks. Good. So. Good. Ed? And all of the, the committees I serve on were uh, dark. They went they, dark. They did, huh? not, they did not meet. CCWA will meet this, this month. Well, I thought, I thought the green team was a, a very good meeting. We brought up uh, different ways of, of helping Buellton become greener, uh, perhaps uh, looking at our cash for grass program. We, we allocate 25000 a year for residents who want to convert their front lawns into uh, what local landscaping. Local yeah, drought -tall native, and native, and native and drought tolerant. Um, and so far we've only spent 5000 So uh, it needs to either, either we need to advertise it more or we need to look at it. Uh, we also had a North County uh, Association of Government meeting, and they're taking all of the master bike programs and trying to combine them so that uh, Santa Barbara County, Solving, and Bealton, that we might all kind of flow together. So that was it. Um, Moving on then to our business items. Uh, agenda item number eight, the first contract amendment with the Buellton Business Association Chamber of Commerce for operation of a visitor's bureau. Mr. Berdzinski. Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, on August 9th, the City Council authorized an additional $50,000 funding for the Visitors Bureau, bringing the yearly total for this fiscal year to $450,000. Attachment one is the contract with the Buellton Business Association Chamber of Commerce that reflects this funding for this fiscal year. Attachment two is the revised budget from the Visitors Bureau. And I think Kathy can touch on this, but some of the 50,000 would go from the deficit from the prior fiscal year. So the recommendation at this time is to approve the First Amendment to the service contract and authorize the city manager to execute the amendment. However, and, and I believe this is still correct, uh, Steve, that to approve this will take all f affirmative three votes tonight. So a 2-1 vote would not approve the contract. So I suggest maybe you take public comment because people are here to talk on it and your concerns can be brought out. And then if, if it, in fact, is not a 3-0 vote for approval, then it would have to be continued to the next meeting until we have four council members. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? First of all, from council. No, okay. Um, I don't have any public speaker comments. Was there anybody who wanted to speak about agenda item number eight? Okay. Then I respectfully <coughs> request that we put this off until the next meeting. I think it's only fair that uh, Vice Mayor King be a part of this decision. Um, I. I don't know that we would have three votes tonight, and I just think it would be more respectful to have uh, Vice Mayor King here. Do you need a second? Or consensus. Yeah, consensus. Consensus is fine. That's I okay. Think you have to, to the yeah. next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, discussion of truck parking along McMurray Road, agenda item number nine. Mr. Beardsinski. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of City Council. This was asked to be brought back by the City Council, and the Council has reviewed this several times in the past. Different Councils, not this particular one, but it, different members, I think, have been involved at, at some point uh, reviewing it. And the direction at that time was not to prohibit truck parking along the street. 
With upcoming development of the cross ho Crossroads Hotel site, the City Council directed staff to bring the prohibition of truck parking along McMurray Road back for City Council discussion. Some items to consider is prohibiting truck parking without a viable alternative parking area could impact the existing businesses that rely on patronage by persons driving the trucks. The developers of the Crossroads Hotel site have expressed concerns regarding aesthetics and noise from trucks parking along McMurray, impacting the people that will be staying at their future hotels. And also, uh, other issue that's been brought up recently is potential site distance issues for people exiting the townhomes development onto McMurray Road. Code-wise, they meet the site distance triangle, but visually, the trucks are still... Um, you can still see the trucks and they do block, but code-wise they do meet our requirements. A letter has been sent to the property owner of Motel 6 inquiring whether they would work with the city to install truck parking on their vacant area. I have not heard back from them on that particular letter. I also informed them tonight that the city council will be discussing the truck parking. So I don't know if they're in the audience tonight, but uh, they have been invited. I've also sent a letter to Peace Soup Andersons to try to resurrect our issue, our request to put RV truck parking in their back parking lot, maybe a partnership with the city. And they were trying to set up a meeting next week between staff and Milguja to discuss that further. So at this time, we're looking for city council for discussion and provide any direction regarding truck parking. Whatever direction, if there's an action that you want to take, then we would have to bring that action back at another meeting to, right. to, to take. So. Okay. I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you very much. So before I open it to the public, I'm, are there any questions? And, and we did receive no. two emails that were distributed to the council regarding from the people, uh, two residents of the town home saying had parking. parking should be restricted. All right. Thank you very much. Then we're going to listen to our public. Uh, opening it up, our first speaker is Lorena Simpson. Good evening, yeah. Madam Mayor and Council Members. Um, I came here today t to voice my concern about the truck parking along McMurray. I don't typically come out and speak in front of people, so I went ahead and wrote some notes on my phone, so I was hoping I could read from my phone. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay, so I own a condo on the in the new Vineyard Village development. I came here today to express my concern regarding the commercial trucks parked on McMurray. Over the last year, there has been uh, an increase in traffic and congestion on McMurray due to the new stores in the shopping center <coughs> and families moving into the housing development. The newly widened road makes parking available for all types of vehicles. However, when big commercial trucks and or RVs park along McMurray, it is difficult to see oncoming traffic making the intersection of Valley Vineyard Circle near the shopping center and the residential area hazardous to cross. Additionally, as a parent of two children, I have concerns about big rigs and RVs being allowed to park overnight so close to a place where children wait for a city and or school bus. Um, as more residents and stores move into the area, I'm concerned this will become a very dangerous intersection if the city doesn't address the parking issues on McMurray. I understand that the people who drive trucks for a living need to be able to park and rest, so I hope by coming here tonight and expressing my concerns, the city can come up with a sensible parking solution that will both alleviate the safety concerns of residents like myself, but also accommodate the truck driver's need for a suitable place to park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Susan Perry. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much for um, our time to speak. I really appreciate that. Uh, First, I'd like to say my father was a long-haul trucker. I have empathy regarding the needs to rest, to eat, and to get their trucks um, refueled. Uh, but the addition of 155 units on McMurray has completely changed the complexion on that road. Um, as you know, as I just said, you, you know my name is Susan Perry, and I live in Vineyard Village. Uh, recently, I spoke with many of the residents in our complex, and we all agree that the semi-trucks parked on McMurray are creating an extremely dangerous situation. Um, at times, these semi-trucks cause zero visibility. And by the way, I have a couple of pictures 
I was just out for a walk and had my phone, and so I just took some pictures, just haphazardly. Um, anyway, uh, vis zero visibility to anyone exiting either of the two exits on Valley Vineyard Circle. Besides having to pull out into the street in order to look right and left, we have to contend with vehicles pulling onto McMurray Road from the Marriott, from McDonald's, from the movie theater, from Taco Bell. Uh, so there's a lot that you need to take into consideration when you're pulling out onto McMurray. And when you have to pull that far out into the street, by the time it's clear here, it's not clear here. If you're back further, you have time to react. And, and, and so it's, it, it's, it's dangerous. Um, our development is a little less than half completed. In a few years, we will have twice as many people exiting on to McMurray. When the hotel or hotels are completed, there will be three times, if not more, the amount of vehicles exiting. This greatly increases the potential of an accident occurring, especially from the hotels because people aren't used to what we know we need to contend with and how careful we need to be when we're pulling out, if a truck is there and we can't see. I noticed that the Hampton Inn has a very wide park on McMurray and in front of their facility, but there are, no, there are signs stating no parking. And I was, I'm surprised because they don't have as much to contend with as we do. They're not as close to um, the 246, et cetera. I'm hoping uh, you will honor the safety of our residents and future hotel patrons and add the same signs in front of the Vineyard Village Complex. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for coming. Jim Perry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My is going to be pretty short. I'm just going to take up she where says. she's... <laughs> left off. Um, my name is also Jim Perry and I live at Vineyard Village. Uh, the intersection of uh, McMurray Road and, and uh, 235 is, pro I'm sorry, 246 is probably the most congested intersection in all of San Inez Valley. And one of the problems is, like if semis are going north and they want to exit on to 246 and then on to McMurray. There's two traffic lights within, what, 100, 200 feet of each other. They have to turn left and if there's no uh, cars in the turning lane, they can pull on up to the light. If there's cars in the turning lane, they have the option of either blocking the intersection or just waiting until the intersection clears. Uh, we run into, we go to Santa Barbara a couple of times a, a week, and we run into that situation quite often. Uh, I don't know that we can blame the truckers for that, but it is certainly a problem. Um, coming on 246 to turn on to make, uh, and then turning on to McMurray, the, it's a very tight right turn and if a couple of times I've seen people almost over the line a little bit into the other lane and the trucks have had to sit there until the light changes so that people could go on um, but I to add on what my wife talked about our our unit I know we're new to the community <laughs> but uh, we are a resident of the community now. We've been here for a year and a half, and eventually there's going to be 155 <coughs> units of probably three to four people each and two or three cars each, plus the two hotels. And it's something's got to be done to address it. It's I, I understand the trucker's problem, but we you know, somehow the issue has to be dealt with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And Madam Mayor, if I just... Uh, uh, for the new residents of what we're doing for that particular intersection of 246 and McMurray, we are have been in the process of trying to a, a get additional property from the gas station to widen that particular intersection. But that's a, a lengthy process when you're dealing with gas stations and trying to get right of way. So that is in process, and we're trying to get that. And uh, so we we do understand that, and we're trying to take care of it. Thank you. 
Uh, Bobby Menley. Menely, I'm so sorry. Good evening. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'm a local trucker. I know there's a. Uh, I understand there's a large influx of new residents to this town, in this valley, new investors. Um, with that being said, they don't know the history of this town and this valley. We have Gardner hot plant right here in Buellton, Buell Flat Rock and Solving, and Granite B Rock in San Ynez. We have a very large uh, population in this town, in this city, in this whole valley of truckers, truck owners, truck drivers. There's two places in this entire valley that 18 wheelers can park McMurray Road and Avenue of the Flags. They are the only places for truckers to stop and eat or stop and sleep. That's it. And the, the, the parking right now on McMurray Road is very limited. There's not very many semis that can stop there. And um, I understand, you know, the residents' frustrations. But like I said, there's, there's two small spots in this entire valley for big rigs. And they bring a lot of revenue to this town and this whole valley. And we've been trucking here long before the city became a city, when it was a town. I mean, dating back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, obviously, you know, Ed. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we keep something available and open for trucks on McMurray Road as well that, as the Avenue of the Flags, because that's all we have. And, you know, for long haul truckers and the local guys, it's going to be a huge effect on us. And you have over 30 trucks just in this valley alone, you know, and their families. So, like I said, I, I understand new residents and new new investors, but they don't know the history of this town and what's been here and, and the needs of the local and and on-road truckers. And um, I'd really hate to see the truck parking go at McMurray Road. Uh, as far as the local truckers go, we're very courteous, very cautious with anybody who lives here, because I live here, especially when there's kids around. And we look out for the residents, we look out for the streets, we look out for everybody around here because this is our backyard. So, you know, it sometimes it's good having the truckers around, especially the local guys. And, um, you know, as traffic safety is priority, and I feel the, the, the minimal zones that they have on McMurray Road right now are very small. I mean, there's, there's not much more. You can't fit more than three, four semis on that road where it is right now, but it's enough for somebody to park, run down to McDonald's, park, go to Motel 6, park, go to Taco Bell. Otherwise, we're out of options. And the, like I said, these are only two places in the entire valley that we can park our trucks. And, you know, the residents choose to live here, I understand that, but, you know, there's got to be some, some room to work with there. Thank you. I, I have a quick question for yes. you. Um, you know, we understand. First of all, I totally agree. Uh, Bulton was, you know, this is how Bulton became a... a a town was the traffic going from Los Angeles to San Francisco, the truckers, they're a big part of our history. Can you think of any place? I mean, we're trying, we're trying to come up with ideas, you know, using the back parking lot at Pisu, <coughs> getting Motel 6 to let truckers park in their lot, creating a lot down below. Is there any place you can think of? Uh, my honest opinion is the whole new crossroads deal there off McMurray Road was poorly planned. The layout and everything is very bad, okay. pulling onto McMurray Road and 246, so it makes it very difficult. Um, but, you know, you have the, the Schumach Center, has a little bit of room down there, but then we have the two vacant lots right there at the bottom on the corner of DeMassa and McMurray Road on, on each corner there. Um, so truckers could use that to utilize, say, Hampton Suites to stay there, but still, that's that's quite a hike, you know, half a mile to get yeah. food or something. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to be able to stop and, and walk a short distance, because it's not like we have a car, we can't pull up to the front door of a restaurant or, or a hotel, right. you're walking half a mile or, or a mile, you know, and, and there's a lot of older truckers who are in the 70s still trucking, you know, they aren't going to make that hike, you know. Um, so, so closely, I mean... It, it, the, the space is just so limited. Yeah. It, it really is. I mean. Okay. Well, if, you come up with, if you, you know, come up with anything, let me know. I mean, we, we could, there's, there's parking like on South, South uh, McMurray Road, right there. Mm -hmm. 
like where the, where the red curbs all painted red, you know, that's a good spot for trucks, but the curbs painted red, you know. Okay. You know, they can stop and eat and stuff and maybe walk across the street to Motel 6. That truck parking along that side, along Carl's Jr. there. Um, I see a lot of trucks down by the tree at the very end of the cold sack. Um, and then, like the other lady mentioned, in, in front of uh, the new hotel down there where it says no, no, tr no parking, there's a wide area that could fit probably two trucks there. Um, Thank you. So that, that's, but unfortunately, there's not, a, you know, there's, there's really nowhere else to go. McMurray Road and Avenue of Flags is all we have. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Sandy Lincoln. Hi, thank you for allowing us to speak. Um, I too am a resident. Uh, many of the people who have spoken before are my new neighbors. Um, I actually did come with a solution that you, m but you already said it. It was that place that's across from Firestone, that big empty lot that's there. Um, perhaps the truckers could eat at Firestone for a little bit. Maybe Firestone could comp them some discount or something for you know for truckers that can park right there um, the other concern I have though it's not necessarily just on the Vineyard Village side of McMurray but I don't know if you guys have been out there but the it's the bus parking that are coming it's hard for me to describe it but they're getting off the freeway at Avenue of the Flags and they're turning that right in front of the Hampton and then they're coming up to the Marriott the buses are actually parking like right in front of the Chumash Resource Center and they are actually blocking additional traffic because you guys only have that small little two-lane road because of the private property so they're blocking it there I actually got out of my car one time and went and spoke to the driver and I said do you realize that I, you guys almost caused a head-on collision because you're parking right here and no one can see around you. So there's an additional concern there and then there's an additional concern right across from the Marriott, not just where you're going to have to turn left to go down McMurray towards Taco Bell, but the concern is to the right also because there's another little cutout that you would, if you would turn right, you can't see anybody coming from that direction either. So I, I understand the concern of the truckers and that they need a place to park. Um, I, but it's really both sides of McMurray that are the problem, and then the side that is on the Marriott, where the buses, the tour buses, are parking there. Um, so they come you know every Saturday or the wine tasting buses or the big school bands they park, on the street? they park on the street in front of the hotel and then they park on the street just coming up the hill and that happened a lot over the summer and I, I can have the, the sheriff take a look at that because I don't believe there's parking on that side of the street <laughs> allowed so be. we can have the sheriff do some enforcement on the, that I believe it's not red but I, there I might think be signs. There's no parking signs. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll look into it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have one last speaker. If anybody else wants to speak on the subject, get your yellow slip and turn it in. Our last speaker is Chris Atkinson. How nice to meet you. Madam Mayor, City Council, um, thank you for having me here tonight, and thank you for bringing up this topic. We um, are the developers, Pacific Property Partners, of the uh, dual hotel site. Um, we're very excited about our investment into the city and, and developing the hotels for the community. Um, and we understand both sides of the coin. We've developed in a lot of areas, um, in Southern California primarily. Um, and we understand what Bobby has to say and the concern about, you know, the truckers and their plight. And, um, but, th you know, and, and we respect the history as well. Um, our concern is naturally when we're investing 35 to 40 million dollars and trying to uh, bring in uh, hotel brands that are going to be a complement, what we feel is to be a complement to the city uh, and the community, um, it's going to be a problem for us. And um, with trucks parked out in front and the aesthetics of that, along with the possible noise with the refrigeration units on some of the trailers and so forth, um, trying to convince guests to pay the amount of money that they're going to pay to stay in one of our two hotels is going to be 
uh, a difficult task and probably worse than uh, uh, one stay or, or, or uh, very few after that. Um, so, so that's where our concern is coming from, and, and we, 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 we really want to do this project. We're very excited about it. Um, we brought our, our brand partners out. We brought some investor partners out. There were trucks parked in front that emanated the converse conversation about, you know, is this a permanent situation, and how is this going to be handled, and so forth. And uh, I said, you know, it's an issue that we do need to raise and, and address. Um, and hopefully come up with a, an, an adequate solution for everyone. Um, we hear what, you know, the townhome owners behind us, uh, you know, what their concerns are. And again, we want to complement the community, including, you know, uh, the, their value of their properties and, and the safety issues. And uh, a lot of people are going to be coming in and out of our property, and we want to make sure it's a safe environment. We don't want any, our guests to be uh, injured or, or concerned or any of that uh, sort of thing. But then again, you know, back to the, the trucking issue, yeah, I mean, w it is an issue. And we understand that, you know, they serve a great uh, service to, to our, our community and, and, and California and, and the United States. So what are we going to do about that? And where are they going to go? And hopefully there's a reasonable solution that we can all work together on and, and make it happen. So with that, I thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Got one last speaker slip. Uh, Kristen Raja, please step up. Hi, I'm Kristen Raja. I'm, I've been here about a year, so I'm new to the community. Welcome. Um, thank you. Um, just sitting here listening to this um, conversation, it seems to me that we could possibly look at it a different way and find a, a spot a little bit farther out of town and maybe consider running a shuttle service for the truckers. Um, I don't know if that could be partially funded by the hotels or, or some sort of joint thing, but um, you know, we, we could we could park them a little bit farther away and, and shuttle them into town for food and hotels and, and all that. So that's all. Thank you very much. You might talk to SB CAG about that, Madam Mayor. I could talk to SB CAG about that. I believe we have a meeting next week. <coughs> Alrighty, I have no other uh, speaker slips, so I'm bringing it back to council. Uh, closing public comments, or and uh, any, <coughs> yeah. Um, Thank you. I, I see both sides of it. Uh, um, having come out, it's it's gotten a little bit better since uh, the repaving, but coming out of the crossroads uh, from Tractor Supply, you do have to. Uh, really watch yourself as you negotiate whether you're going left or right out of there um, because of the, the large trucks <coughs> and uh, they serve a great value to to the valley and and to, to everywhere um, I we send a lot of people from the farm uh, the vans who come in from Kentucky and whenever they all go to Motel 6 I mean, it's just convenient for them, and, and so uh, they do park along there and, and uh, other spots. Uh, so I, I think hopefully we c if we can get Motel 6 or Peace of Anderson's to give us an alternative, uh, it's something that we need to look at. So it, it is a concern, and I understand the plights of uh, the people who live in the vineyard, and uh, we walk that area, my wife and I, and our dogs, and, and it's congested. congested. So I understand. Uh, mm -hmm. We just have find to have uh, a good compromise. Thank you, Councilmember Andrusik. Madam Mayor, thank you. <coughs> it's not just <coughs> that it's been uh, that truckers have been here. There was a whole industry in the San Ynez Valley. We were a major spot for scales, and when I first bought the two of the restaurants that I've had in Bealton. Um, Thursday was huge because there were hundreds of truckers came, stopped, ate, and left. It was a stopping spot. Um, I'm not in favor of trying to take that away for the sake of someone wanting to add. Because here's the here's the conundrum we're in. We've got a small parcel where two hotels have been approved. Now, they're entitled to their use of the hotel. 
but to say that the other people are making noise is a that it is their livelihood your hotel is your livelihood if you can't get guests I, I think where I'm coming from is we we're packing more we're inviting more people to come to us the same amount of space without without a, a justification or a, a solution I was going to ask about the no parking signs I'd like I think we need to bring that back for modify I'm not sure how they got there in in front of the Hampton At, uh, I, I guess it's in the front of the Hampton well there's not enough space there to have parking there's because okay. we have the turn lanes and those types of things so that's why that was put forward as part of the public but improvements I mean, as far as the the, the um, the longness of the street that's perfect for truckers to get in and get out without having to uh, we, we stay in a couple of places in Southern California where truckers come and they they have to jockey in and out of the, the hotel property just to get and that that makes more noise than uh, them just pulling up and leaving um, I've always respected the the um, the attitude we have and you know even when we were talking about having a um, an identity what, what did we call it? what was it that we I'm sorry branding the imp branding and it's been a wonderful if you if you look at the um, the revenue that comes in this place it's a uh, it's it is a service town and there are many people that mm -hmm. gag when they say that but Buellton is a service town and I've always been proud of it and I think we need to find a way to modify I like the Sandy's idea of a shuttle. Many many organizations, many communities have, and more metropolitan areas shuttle their parking traff their, their traffic in. I remember when we first went to uh, to New York City, we drove there, and we thought, where are we going to put this car? The uh, the place we stayed had an elevator, and up it went, and that you know that ain't going to help trucking, but that. That was an amazing uh, innovation to keep revenue coming to that that section of the of the state. Um, I I don't want to sugarcoat it or say that we should do it because the reality is if we're going to allow more places to have more vehicles, they have to park somewhere, and that's 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 not the issue of the trucking. The trucking takes big space. But they're very responsible. I think everyone realized that. I come down. I come down uh, from that uh, down McMurray almost every night when I go home to see how how things are. We don't have rowdiness. We don't have uh, cars parking. You know, there's some communities near here within 25 miles where there's you know they're partying. They're they're having uh, tailgate parties in public streets. So we, we don't have that, but we do have this issue, and I don't. It isn't going to take care of itself. Somebody's going to have to realize that we do not have the space to take care of it. And I think if we, um, if if there's some proposal, you know, I, I appreciate pea soups uh, space, but I know that we've. You know, I think we have the Bach Hotel still on the books, don't we? No, we do it not. Is. Oh, okay. Well, there was a, f a hundred more, another hundred rooms that has uh, gone by the wayside. But I, I, um, I, I don't want to bring more um, more stress to the trucking industry because they, the the scale has been removed. It, it was it was a it was a um, a real magnet for Buellton. That's I think the next scale is in King City somewhere. The, for uh, for the for the truckers and the produce needs to be weighed and moved to market. So that that being said, I, I want to be clear that I I'm an advocate for the industry that we've always had. And new industry is wonderful, but I don't want to throw out the the establishments that we have for the sake of something that could very well go away in the future. Um. I truly believe that we can find a solution to this. Uh, we do have right. safety issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I, 
we're already down to where Buellton is the easiest access on and off the freeway in the valley. Always has been. And uh, I really like the idea of bottom of McMurray, the southern end. Uh, can we, I mean, those are our streets. Can we get out there and look at that and see if there's some way we can get trucks able to park down there? I really want to follow through with uh, Pea Soup Anderson's and with Motel 6, since a lot of the truckers stay at Motel 6. Even if Motel 6, the truckers uh, paid a $10 charge to park their trucks and sleep in the parking lot in their trucks. Um, I really want to pursue all that. I know you're trying. <laughs> you just yeah, have no, to no get that, answers. Yes. But. So we got pea soup in the in the works. The other pro property you mentioned at the end of McMurray, the city owns some of it, but it's also private property a as well. And then hopefully I can get in contact but with the, Motel the 6. the street down at the bottom, past the dry entrance into CVS and Albertsons? The street, but also to the area towards between that and the freeway is private property. It's owned by the same person who owns that, this right. where people right. help. Right, people. and then if you, park, if you park right in there, then you've got traffic and side issues too. Right, but and then we just have to make sure we have access to our water treatment facility. That's just what I was going to ask it you. It would be, uh, we had talked been talking to Caltrans years ago about a northern end <coughs> parking lot, commuter parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps Caltrans would be willing to let us use that as a turnoff. I don't know how easy it would be for a truck to get in there. Perhaps Dr. Buell would be willing to uh, lease, temporarily lease some space. Um, and if not, the city has their own little parking lot on Park Street in second. <laughs> one, two trucks. One, one two trucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Maximum. <laughs> two trucks. I just, I just think, you know, we, we have some incredibly good things going on in our town. Avenue of Flags, we have a specific plan now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, want, we want the trucking to continue in our town, but we need to find a place okay. to park them. I think that's consensus from the council to work on as many options okay. as as we can to see if we can get something in place. I yeah, it's it's just going to get worse uh space wise. I really do appreciate though everybody coming in and giving uh different views and ideas and suggestions. I uh it's it's something I think our town can solve. So thank you very much. Alrighty. City manager's report. Now the mayor members of city council they we Lompo did do the evictions of the, the homeless in their riverbed area, but prior to that we did a census. Uh, AmeriCorps, the Sheriff's Department, and uh, um, somebody else. Collaborative fund yeah. for homeless. Yeah. Some, uh, yeah, they're home for good now, but, but they, they did a survey. They found a small one small encampment, but no homeless during their survey. So there there are a few and we've noticed them around town. So those aren't the ones coming from Lompoc. So we got a basic idea of, of if more are coming here, we will know that they've come from Lompoc. Did we ever get any photographs of uh, the one concerns from the Lompoc Police Department of I put the request in they have never, not never sent never sent anything. Never okay, sent anything. So I will follow I will follow up on that. Thank you. Uh, tough they're, t they're top three. Yes. Tough shed is uh, being constructed, and we are going to have grading and uh, uh, pavement uh, poured uh, next week. Actually, Saturday and then uh, Tuesday. Uh, we got beach construction out of Lompoc, and they did it under the the amount we had budgeted for it. So, and we'll get this tough shed in, start getting that storage into appropriate uh, location. And we, our uh, Irma is putting in a funding for a grant to obtain our easements for the bikeway on the west side of town. So the Good. two pieces that we don't, two or three pieces we don't have, we're going to try to get funding so we can possibly purchase them and get the trail in from the park to uh, Flying Flags, who is going to be giving us an easement and helping possibly develop some amenities down below their area. So we'll get a portion of the trail in. So we'll put that in as well. Go on is it. All right. Thank you very much. With that, I am adjourning this meeting.
We'll see you all uh, Thursday, September 27th at 6 o'clock. Thank you all for coming. Good. Thanks, Steve. Take Thanks, care, guys. Steve. Have a good night. Good night. Good job.